freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 242 of Gun Freedom Radio, where we engage, we educate, and we inform. We are brought to you by azfirearms.com, your nationwide hometown gun shop. I am one of your hosts, Cheryl Todd. And I'm the other guy, Dan Todd. Our show today is The Question Behind the Question, mm. and our guest is John G. Miller. John is the author of QBQ, The Question Behind the Question, and several other titles which speak of personal accountability, eliminating blame, that's a good one, mm -hmm. and procrastination and victim thinking. Welcome to the show, John. Welcome back to the show, John. Thanks, Cheryl. Every six years, you decide to have me on. <laughs> For sure. Well, we're very late. I, I've seen the news lately, and this nation needs a good shot of, of the medicine that you deliver. So, Well, it's funny. I was just telling my wife, Karen, yesterday, let's see, when Clinton was being impeached, we needed QBQ and personal accountability. I know we're going to talk about it. And then during the wars that were going on and the geopolitical fights and all the election stuff throughout the years, you know, uh, that it just and now during COVID, it just seems like QBQ and personal accountability always is timely, which of course makes it timeless, right, Dan? Well, I would say that personal accountability should be every single day, and and we've kind That's of right. let it go, didn't we? Well, we so. have, and and it's so mysterious. Like, what is the question behind the question? Besides being <laughs> the title of one of your books, I and mean, we got flipping the yes. switch and. Uh, you've even got another one about how to parent. We're going to dive into all of them, but yep. what is this mysterious question behind the question? Well, the question behind the question is represented by the acronym QBQ, which I already mentioned. And uh, we uh, teach this idea around the world now because we find that personal accountability is so badly needed. So here's what the QBQ is all about in a nutshell. I spent many years implementing selling leadership and management training and what I did was go in inside organizations and do facilitation of classes and sessions for days on end three-day projects back in the 80s and 90s you know now people don't want to spend three minutes on training but back then we were doing three days and I would listen to these lousy questions people would ask like why do we have to go through all this change when is someone going to train me and who made the mistake and why can't we get better people and one day way back Back in 1994, Cheryl and Dan, I coined the phrase, the question behind the question. I, I said to a group, why don't we turn those questions around? And instead of asking, why do we have to go through all this change? Let's ask, what can I do to adapt to the changing world? Instead of asking, when will that department do its job right? Why don't we ask, how can I be my best today? So it became the question behind the question. I went to Iowa to teach it to a big insurance company. And it quickly got shortened to QBQ because we all love acronyms. And so here we are years later. I've had the, UR, the URL QBQ.com for 22 years. I'm very fortunate that I snagged it back in 1998. And the book is titled QBQ. Now we need to get you the new version because yes. we spiffed up the jacket a little bit. And we did some editing and flipping the switch, the sequel. But it's all about personal accountability and we can get into how it unfolds, but it's all about asking me, asking myself better questions so I can practice personal accountability in my life. John, how do I, you know, I got to buy gifts for sure all the time. What, where do I buy that new cover book at? <laughs> well, QBQ.com and of course any online retailer, personal accountability is so badly needed. The book's out there. So, she needs books. Oh, man. Me, I Are love you saying books. she needs more accountability, Dan? She needs more accountability. Oh, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk later, okay? <laughs> oh, boy, that's, Text me. 
Yeah, for sure. So really though, I mean, there's some people out there that are thinking, okay, what is this even phrase? Personal accountability. Yeah. Like, is this, what, what is this whole thing? How it's a good, does it apply to me? Uh, yeah. Is it just for other people? It's good for them. Just dive into that a little bit, if you would. Sure. Well, uh, there's a couple of myths around accountability. And again, my background is in 1986, I left a big company where I was working eight to five and kind of bored to tears. And I found my niche selling training to managers and leaders. Okay. And I, I got into selling uh, leadership training and listening again. This is where I kind of discovered my QBQ methodology. But over the years, I learned there's a couple of myths around accountability, especially in the corporate environment. The first myth is we think it's something I hold others to because that's the way managers are trained. You know, it's my job to call my people in on Tuesday and I'm going to hold them accountable. Well, that attitude doesn't work really well, especially nowadays. Now, it doesn't mean we should stop being a good people manager, but it's not about holding others accountable until I've practiced personal accountability in my own life. So accountability's first myth is we think it's about holding others accountable. And the second thing is we think it's a team thing. We think accountability is a team thing. You know, hey, what can we do today? Because over the past 30, 40 years in American business, we have been overtrained on teamwork. And we have lost sight of the individual, the power of one. What can Cheryl, what can Dan, what can John Miller do today? So the myths around accountability are we think it's for others and we think it's a team thing. Personal accountability, we define it in the QBQ book as making better choices in the moment. Making better choices in the moment. And that's something John Miller, the author of QBQ, can do, do better all day long. In that moment, when the ball is dropped by someone and mistakes are made, something goes against me, life feels frustrating, COVID hits, uh, I can always pause and ask a lousy question like, well, why is this happening to me? Or yeah. I can pause and ask a QBQ, what can I do today to be my best? How can I move forward? So personal accountability is all about me making better choices. And the QBQ helps me do that. John, it does seem like we're being hit with more of that lately, though. I mean, there's so much going on in the world today. This, uh, it's getting the right getting it right every time is kind of hard uh it's very difficult with a society that encourages i'm offended at every turn uh society encourages entitlement you know let's put my hand out see what the government can, can give me now i mean the great debate over the the money i mean no citizen shut this co economy down the politicians and the bureaucrats did that so we won't debate here whether the government should have been handing out money or not but when we start handing out enough so people aren't even bothering to go back to work, that's probably a problem. Yeah. Uh, just recently, I heard of one of the governors who refused to take federal funds because she has kept her state in the black and never shut down. So we all have approached this very, very differently. But in the end, I'm still accountable, Dan, for me, my thoughts, my feelings, my actions. What can I do today to be my very best? How can I avoid the blame game? There's just so many different directions we can take QVQ. You mentioned the parenting book, uh, raising accountable kids. You know, you know, politicians are always saying we need to do it for our children and our children's children and our children's children's children. <laughs> it's like the most classic political line ever for the children. Well, how about we teach the children how to practice personal accountability in their own lives, which means no entitlement thinking, no whining, no victim thinking, no blame, no finger pointing, no procrastination, no asking for handouts. What can I do today to contribute to this world? That's a great question to teach a child. But as we say in QBQ and in Raising Accountable Kids, <coughs> modeling, modeling is the most powerful of all teachers. Mm -hmm. So we right. adults, we better be practicing this stuff before we try to teach it to the kids. Because they watch us even after they get older and moved out. They still watch what we do and how we handle things. Mm -hmm. Well, That's my wife and I have seven kids, ages 37 down to 21. And I would not disagree with you, Dan. They do watch us. Well, it's a shame that our government is, is try, it's almost like they're trying to teach kids not to be accountable. Let, me, let the government handle it for you. But they can't be around every corner and watch every move that a kid makes. So the kids need to be accountable for themselves. This stuff, Dan, it goes very deep in society. Are we teaching our kids to move forward and be their best? Or are we teaching our kids to feel sorry for themselves, have a pity party and wait for someone to take care of them? I'm not attacking the government or anybody who 
is confused over accountability because I think right now this society is quite honestly a tough person. Not, I'm not a tough place to live. I'm not talking about for the partisans. The partisans on the left or maybe the right, you know, they're going to push their agenda. But the, the average person in the middle, I think they just want to work. Mm -hmm. I think they want to contribute. I think they want to put food on the table and take care of their family. But they're being told by their leaders uh, messages of, of entitlement and messages that you're a victim and, and messages you should feel sorry for yourself. When, when in the end, we could just be practicing personal accountability, taking ownership. I ownership is like a synonym for accountability. It's really amazing. Until I own my life, my decisions, and my mistakes, I will never learn. Think about the people who make mistakes and then they blame others for those mistakes. They don't learn anything. You want to learn, grow, and change? The first step is own your life, your decisions, and your mistakes. Yeah, there's some people out there that are, uh, that are working that if they quit working, they would get more money from unemployment. Mm. And so, yes, it happens. I, so I see that there are some people that are holding their own and being accountable on least in that degree mm -hmm. and working and not taking that handout. That is so true. So getting back to you and your wife have raised seven kids. You've got some grandkids. Yeah, I seven, helped a little. Seven kids? You helped a little. Seven, John? And you've got yeah. uh, you work, a, a you crop seven, of, of grand, seven, crop of grandchildren uh, now growing up of various ages. We have yes. two grandchildren ourselves. One, Yay. six. Yes, it's amazing. We love them so much. Uh, six years old and 14 months old. Oh, and nice. nice ages. It's, uh, it's just a blessing. It's a, a wonder every day. How are we going to help them navigate this onslaught of you know, you can't, it's not just the, the news in air quotes. Yeah. I always have to use air quotes with the news, right? I but know. things on social media, oh, right. in school about if I feel bad, then somebody else is responsible for that. Yeah. And, and I'm entitled to destroy property at will, <laughs> you know, we're going to talk about rioting in Portland now. Uh, it, well, not just Portland. But yes, I mean, these are, these are adults. These are children in adult bodies acting out temper yeah, tantrums. Know. As much as they want to say they are righteously angry, this is nothing I would allow my grandchildren to do. I know you wouldn't yeah. allow your grandchildren to do. How do, we, how do we combat that? I mean, some people say, well, just turn the news off. It's not that simple. There, there are hard. messages yeah. coming at them from every angle. Yeah, actually... If you looked at the coronavirus, and we're not going to debate, the, debate it here, but I believe this would never have happened. I don't mean the virus, but I mean the extremes to which we've gone to where people are hiding behind their couches with their masks on in their living rooms. I don't personally believe this would ever have gone this far if we didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. True. 20 I, years I, ago, I, I, don't, I don't think NBC and CBS and CNN could have done it alone. Mm -hmm. We needed the social media to, to be inculcated into our homes and our minds all day long to end up five months later with, with so many people. Okay, I've got a restaurant friend. He owns a business in Greeley, Colorado, and he actually said, in my opinion, people have been scared into their lizard brains. Mm. They've gone into that prehistoric part of our human mind that only is fight or flight, and they're scared and my wife and I, you know, my wife's an RN. I want your audience to know this. My wife's an RN, a medical professional, retired. But we have not been scared of this virus. We've been smart. We wash our hands. We take accountability for our personal behaviors. But we haven't ever moved into that lizard brain part of our, our, our head, our, our mind, where we're so scared that we're out there telling others how to live their life. And that's, that's back to our society right now. It is an extremely judgmental society. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you wanted to debate masks, I would say it this simply. You want to wear a mask? Wear a mask. If I don't want to wear a mask, don't bother me about not wearing a mask. And if so you think simple. you're sick, stay home. And if you think I'm sick, stay six and a half feet away. And I promise you, if I run into you at the grocery store and I've never met you, I will not kiss you. <laughs> well, John, I will be 
personally accountable for my behaviors, but darn it, I didn't want to get into the COVID thing, Cheryl. I'm but sorry. Pers- it's just personal it's accountability is about me, me acting responsibly and not telling others how to live their life. So I'm going to bring this back to QBQ. The okay. power in this message of QBQ, the number one takeaway, I've been on the Dave Ramsey show a few times, if you know who Dave is. Absolutely. And he always says, well, John, what's the number one takeaway from QBQ? And I always tell him, Dave, I can only change me. That's the number one takeaway from QBQ. All I can do is work on me. What can I do today to improve John? How can I be responsible? How can I engage in in safety when it comes to COVID? What can I do to let go of others' behaviors? How can I be my best today? So I, I could rant and rave about COVID, but sticking to personal accountability, the message is all about me taking care of me. And quite honestly, you don't see that on social media. What you see is judgment, anger, lecturing, and shaming. Yeah, John, I'm practicing done. that. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Get off that soapbox. And pra- but I'm going to put you right back on there probably in a second with my next question. But go on, Dan. But practicing that, you know, that's uh, your, your social uh, life, your yeah. Your account, your business, yeah. your finances, everything right. reflects on how you how you act, right? Absolutely, um, and it's so it's so simple, really. It's kind of going back to keep your hands to yourself, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good that, rule, right? Like, doesn't um, you know? It's like my my rights end where it starts infringing on the next person's. Like, I've. That was just ingrained in me in growing yeah, up. Of and I, the whole I, thing I was, has gotten silly. It really has. Just, and so how do we is it possible? I I believe it is, but is yeah. it possible that you're just a, a one individual? You know, what can one person do mindset? Right. And you're going back into the work setting or you're interacting with people on your your Zoom calls, your Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. Can you, even if you're not the boss, even if you're not the one that sets the culture, can you bring these kinds of values into the workplace? Can you encourage them? Can you foster them? I think that's one of the greatest things about QBQ is because it so helps us remember something we already knew, Mm -hmm. which is I can only change me. Mm -hmm. Then when we enter the work environment, Trust me, when you read QBQ, if you've never bought QBQ and you get it today and you read it, I I guarantee you, you're going to think of 23 people who need it. (laughs) And we're going to mention that too on about page 25 of the book. We're going to say, who who have you been picturing? And you'll Mm. chuckle and go, oh my gosh, I've been thinking about my wife, my husband, my boss, my coworkers. As you continue to read, you will lock in QBQ personal accountability is for John Miller. It's for me, you know, whoever I am for me. And that gives us great freedom because then I can go to work and not be concerned that the other department is still blaming. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can let go of the fact that my boss is not perfect. Mm-hmm. Now, one of, the, one of the lousy questions we teach in the book is, why, why don't I get more training? When am I going to get more coaching? Well, if your boss or your company, in your opinion, is not providing enough training and coaching, then go have an adult-adult conversation about that. Mm-hmm. But in the end, the QBQ is going to be, how can I develop myself? How can I develop my own skills and abilities? So whether we take QBQ to work or at home or to church or the nonprofit where we donate our time, one of the greatest things about it is we let go of all that stuff we can't control and we just take care of ourselves. We improve our skills. We change our thinking. You know, Cheryl, you're in our group on Facebook. You know, if anybody wants to join us on the Facebook discussion group, it's just, just search for QBQ group. You'll find this big blue banner, white letters says QBQ. And we just talk all the time about QBQ and changing myself and working on me and not pointing fingers at others and trying to change my spouse, my coworkers, my boss. One of the things in the QBQ book is this, this concept, stress is a choice. Stress is a choice. Now, you, ever, you ever felt all stressed up with nowhere to go? Stress is a choice. And the stress comes from, like right now, let's say during COVID. Like this morning, my wife and I took a three mile walk through our neighborhood. We're outdoors. It's 75 degrees, it's sunny, it's perfect. And we see a woman drive by us wearing a mask all alone in her car. Then we saw two people walking past us with masks on. You know what? We don't think that's needed, but we aren't going to focus on that. Because if I start complaining about the things other people do, and you could take that analogy right to the workplace, if I'm always complaining about other people, I'm going to have a lot of stress. 
You want to lower your stress? Read QBQ. Let go of what you can't control. Work on me. John, I'm lost in the three-hour, the three-mile walk. <laughs> three mile. <laughs> That's well, Arizona, long. you only get out once a year, probably in January. Right. Yeah, because it's Just like 115 about. degrees out there. Just about. Um, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's easy for us to, you know, even those of us that are all about, all right, I can only fix me. It's, you know, pay attention to my, what's in my own yard for us to look at the person driving by with a mask and roll our eyes and go, oh my gosh, what? A, and it's like, well, you know what, how does that affect, how does that impact my life? How is that right. person hurting me by doing yeah. something that I disagree with? It's, you know, it's just kind of a silly example, but it just, it would be so easy for Someone who I, I'm going to tell your audience, I'm an anti-masker and um, I'll, if I have to wear it in the grocery store now, I will, whatever. I, I walked into a pet shop yesterday where I know the owner and I had my mask in my hand. I said, Mike, you're not going to make me wear this, are you? And he said, absolutely not. I'm not the mask police. So he'll be getting more of my business. Okay. Yes. But it's, it's just an example of how we can look at others and judge them for their behaviors. And John Miller has much less stress and, and greater joy when John Miller works on John Miller. That's the truth. And just like you said, rather than uh, being mad at the businesses that for whatever reason they want to be the mask police, why don't we go spend our dollars right. with the places that aren't m policing us with masks and, and otherwise? Like AZ Fire. Like AZ Fire. <laughs> like, we, have, we, have a, we have a sign on our door that says uh, the government requires you to wear a mask, but if you have a medical condition, we're not the mask police. Yeah, we don't. Okay, good. Anything Excellent. About I bet that. your business is up. Oh, oh it's, it's crazy up right now. It is. You, which, are you complaining? Dan, no. are you complaining? No, I'm, I'm not <laughs> complaining at all. In fact, you know, the only thing I'm complain, complaining about is that I wish people would see what's going on earlier and prepare themselves without going into panic hmm. because they do panic. They're pan There's people wow. out there panicking right now. Can I give but you I a line, Dan? But I can't change everybody, right? right. <laughs> I can only change myself. That's right. So I have to be thankful and for what we have and teach them, them the best go. that I can yeah. with what I have. Welcome them when I, they come. I got, thank you. Dan, since I'm way older than you, I'm 62. And uh, you're like 48. Yeah, right. So yeah. I, I want to share some of my wisdom. And I, I suspect, you know, I know we're conservatives here, and I bet a lot of your audience leans pretty far to the conservative side of their thinking. So they, I don't know if they've ever heard this, but the old joke in the 70s or 80s was a Republican is a Democrat who was mugged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, and so now everybody's scared. That's true. Yeah. And mm -hmm. people who are probably going crazy over gun control, I suspect now have gone out and bought a gun. Yes. Yeah. It's funny how times change, huh? It, it is. is. And, and you're exactly right. It's that, that experience that has changed everything. And right. we have collectively as a nation been mugged in a variety of different <laughs> yeah, ways. We have. That's very good. Our, our freedom has been taken from us or we're throwing it away. I mean, there's some version of that uh, but John, uh, on that spectrum, I think. Yep. And give me one sec, Dan. And I did want to like, cause people listen to these shows way into the future and just kind of plop us where we are. Today is August 17th, Monday, August 17th, 2020. And we are still, you know, way past the two weeks that we were oh, supposed yeah. to have uh, brought ourselves indoors and away from each other. Yeah. Uh, we, I personally, I think that uh, the day after the big presidential election, we, we might not ever hear about this again in the news cycle, but that's, that's just me talking. That's, well, you know, I, I have in, no in, insight in died. I on February 5th and February 25th, bam, we had the coronavirus. And just right. saying. Uh, well, John, just the saying, thing that, just a strange coincidence. Yeah, the, just the, saying. The, the, the but I want to make it clear. The virus is real. We yes, know the it virus is, is yes. there. Yes. Yeah. But I don't trust two things, the hype and the yeah. numbers. I don't trust Perfect. the numbers. Perfect. And that's sad. That's disappointing that we get to a point in America where a pretty intelligent guy, pretty intelligent, that's me, and not, not a, a conspiracy theorist at all has to start wondering, are the numbers that are, you can see each night on, on a website, you know, are the numbers real? Right. That's, that's too bad. I don't think they are real. I don't think there's any way possibly could, they could be real because they change all the time. Yeah. We're right. constantly seeing changes. And so how do you follow something that's not stable and, and for sure? You know, well, so. I, absolutely. And in the end, my wife and I were just talking 
talking about this last night because boy, oh boy, do we have a lot of time together the past five months. You know, I'm a speaker. <laughs> I go around the country speaking, but nobody's holding any events. So everything we do on, is on Zoom. Isn't the togetherness a blessing? Oh, it's such a blessing, such right? Such a blessing. Yeah. Well, John, here's how such I took control. Blessing. Here's how I could, took control and accountability. I, I've cut down the social media stuff. I, I, listen, I, I watch the ads for Marketplace uh, to buy things. That's about yep. it. And my fear has gone away. I mean, I, I never really had fear, but you yeah. had that one, you know, there's something in the back, Unknown. stress. It was a stress. Unknown. And I've completely taken that away. And I could care less if, if somebody doesn't like that I wear a mask or don't wear a mask. Right. That, it's none of their business as far as I'm concerned. And, and uh, that's the way, I wish the world worked that way, but you've always got, well, you know, what we have now, the Karens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so oh, so wait a minute. I got to my... clarify something. My wife's name is Karen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel so bad for my friends that are not Karens, you know, yeah, with, know. with the air quotes, but they, they were named Karen. But I, yeah. I personally think that this has revealed something pretty horrible about society. I'm sorry to sound so judgmental, but in general, the human beast is a small, a small beast. We're small beings. Uh, we major in the minors. As I had a mentor I used to say, don't major in the minors. Uh, we just have gotten, we've shown our smallness in this mm. coronavirus. I mean, there's so many big things in the world to focus on and we're fighting over masks and, you know, chloroclox clean. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever it I is. I can't say. <laughs> and the politics. I mean, we're, we, I think we've revealed ourselves as small. And so back to accountability, how can I be big? Well, what can yeah. I do today to change me? How can I let go of what others are doing? How can I practice personal accountability? I just want to mention quickly again, QBQ eliminates three tra traps, victim thinking, procrastination, and blame. So if you have any procrastination in your life, like when will they handle this or blame? Who made the mistake? Or victim thinking like, why is this happening to me? QBQ, the book is a great tool to help you stop asking those questions and start asking the better questions. We call them the question behind the question, the QBQ. So as, and since we are on Gun Freedom Radio and people tune in here, we really do try to speak to the middle space. People that haven't quite made up their minds yet about, you know, are guns evil? Are they good? You know, how do I uh, incorporate them into my life? And we do have, because of COVID and the riots and all the fear going on out there, millions upon millions of brand new first time gun owners yeah. who at the core of that is that I am going to take care of my own, uh, take care of myself. I'm taking right. control of some small piece of my life by having a tool of, of self-defense or a tool that I can go hunting on the land, you know, if, if right. meat stops showing up at the grocery store. You know, it's funny, Cheryl, I don't know anybody more accountable than gun owners because they know the dangers. So true. So they, so don't, true. they don't leave those guns out where the four-year-old grandson can find it. They, they right. don't make the mistakes that the media would, would say we make. Gun yes. owners are incredibly accountable because yeah. they are totally into safety. Am I right? Oh, well, you're I, so I, right. Responsible. I would say responsible gun, gun owners, owners, yes. Yeah. Uh, there are, th th some of my concerns are there are people out there now that decide they want to buy a gun and they don't well, get right. the training. And that, that kind of a scary, but you know what's unfortunate about the business we're in is that, you know, the panic, people fear buy, but then we also have the other side of the people that have become victims. What do you mean by that? Well, they, they, they became a victim and now they need a gun. Oh, they, they, they actually were the ones that were right. mugged. Instead, right. of, was instead of thinking and being responsible ahead of time and saying, you know, this could happen. I need to get training. I need to, to have a firearm. They thought that they would never need a firearm. Right. And right. That, it's and it's so so and i we see wish that. that there was a more proactive mindset which you know the qbq talks about right and yeah. it it goes right back to our roots right back to the beginning of our nation right back to this document the the constitution and the bill of rights that our founding fathers fought for the ability to be a self uh a self-ordained person right uh right of, sovereign individual in, a, in inside of a sovereign nation, all of that is directly tied to the mysterious question, the QBQ. <laughs> um, so if you're talking specifically to the new gun owners, whatever their mindset was, whether they were doing the Christmas puppy syndrome where they're like, all right, yeah. so I got this thing and right. I, all right, I'll put it up on the closet shelf. 
or whether they're, you know, really, you know, okay, I do want to do the best thing. I'm not quite sure where to get training, wherever they are on that spectrum. Can you just kind of speak to them from the mindset of QBQ uh, to to tap them into our heritage and, and what is going to really help them uh, with their whole personal accountability journey? Well, I would say if you, if you've decided to secure a firearm and have it in your home, the responsible action is to take some classes and get some training and work with that gun in a safe environment so that you can be as good as you can be with it. Hopefully the first time you ever use it is not when some bad guy or gal comes into your house at three in the morning. So I think the, the simple message for me would be just be accountable, learn to use it correctly, and you know, learn to keep it safe, do all the right things that Cheryl and Dan would tell you to do. Absolutely, well, I appreciate that. So John, just as we start wrapping up, um, the, It's such a simple thing, but you've given us so much to think about. And this is, as you you said earlier, it's something that we will continue to unpack every single day, reapply every single day, (laughs) you know, when we're met with the next big challenge uh, from either just watching the news or in our personal life, we've got to go touch back to that, that core every single day. Um, Give people... Again, show us your books, give us the tools. Oh, How thanks. do we stay tapped into this? Sure. Well, that last part of that question actually does lead me that we've come out with a new product, the QBQ Workbook. And you know, we, we decided just to call it what it is. How's that for creativity? The QBQ <laughs> I love it. Workbook. <laughs> My daughter, but what Kristen, is it? Yeah. It's so mysterious. Oh, it's right. the QBQ Workbook. No, it's a hands-on tool for practicing personal accountability at work and life. And it goes, it goes with the QBQ book. The reason I mentioned this is people, they read QBQ. Sometimes they say, how can I take this further? Well, a couple thoughts. One, read this at least three times. As we say in the book, repetition is a motor of learning. Get the QBQ workbook. But if you want to broaden your experience with our content, Outstanding covers the organization. Personal accountability is very personal, but when it comes to running a better organization, we've got 47 ways here to do that. But I will tell you this, the theme of all our material is personal responsibility, personal accountability. And it's kind of fun. Uh, I've had people follow us for a long time. I've got another friend named Cheryl, who's a brunette and about 39, and she <laughs> lives she lives in, in the D.C., in Virginia area, and she's an executive with a high-tech firm, and she first saw me speak, get this, in 1999, and I spoke on QBQ, and she is also on the page that you're on, Cheryl, QBQ Group, and she continually, like you, but she continually returns to those tried and true principles. I can only change me. Blame solves no problems. When I play victim, I'm serving no one, not even myself. Procrastination's the friend of failure. I can only be great when I take ownership for my life. So there's someone who's been around us for 20 years and she just sticks with those fundamental principles, those timeless truths that just work in every area of our life. So I would say, you know, keep practicing personal accountability. And if you're not quite sure how to do it, get the QBQ book. Well, I love that. I'm definitely going to look up the other Cheryl. Uh, she's <laughs> much younger than I am. She's 39. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Actually, she, she just turned 60. Oh, awesome. So could I ask a, a question that might make me look like I'm not too smart? Well, sure. John. So, you know, I look at your book and I, and I think, man, if, if the 14 people that work for us all just did that if they just held themselves accountable and just you know just worry about themselves and do the best that they can still work as a team but there's that one guy and he's messing it up for all of us named dan i know well, it, right it, it very much <laughs> that's it, what i thought he was going it's very much could be but but so you know we can't change other people mm-hmm. but the people that are in our group are causing us what, what does the guy that's trying to practice okay. your belief. See, Dan, that's, that's a different issue. That's a management issue. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad you asked the question because QBQ, I can only change me. I can, I can only change me. I can only change me. Yes, that's the mantra here. But if I'm a manager, 
I need to ask, what can I do to be a better coach? How can I be a more effective people manager? What can I do to learn new skills? And of course, you might need to ask, how can I help this person go be less effective somewhere else? Yes. (laughs) exactly see that's part of accountability my background 10 years selling training for managers managers forget that piece when they take on qbq sometimes they think oh oh no i can't coach and confront yes Mm -hmm. that's part of your accountability coach Mm -hmm. people confront them if they're late to work you don't wait for the seventh time to talk to them you talk to them the first time it happens yeah you need to improve you i'm talking to managers in general No. And in the end, we all know it. You've hired and fired. Sometimes somebody just has to be moved on because they might be poisoning the group. Yeah. And you're not talking about uh, being codependent. You're not talking about this person is not living up to snuff. And so it's all my fault, you know? Well, no, but here's the key. My mentor used to teach this. If you have someone on your team that's failing, who's failing, ask yourself some questions. Have I trained them? Have I structured their job? Have I communicated well? Have I coached them when they're off track? Have I confronted them when they relate to work? Have I, have I done everything I can? And if the answer is yes, I've done everything I can as a manager, then fire that person today. Now the HR people in our sessions 20 years ago got really scared because no, 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 no. Don't go fire somebody without, you know, paperwork (laughs) documents. (laughs) Yes. Yes. But what we're talking about is my mentor used to make managers look in the mirror and say, okay, someone's not succeeding. They're struggling on the team. What have I not done? However, at the point where I can say I've done everything I can for this person, Mm -hmm. then it would be time to move them on. Well, I have two. no codependency here. It's just accountability. I have two comments. One is that a person that you're going to fire should know that they're going to be fired before you fire them. It should should never be a surprise. If you warn them, coach them along the way. Right. And the second thing I'm finding is interesting for me is that if you have a team of good workers and then you have one bad seed, the bad, the good workers can't get the bad seed to come to work and be part of the group, but the bad seed can spread and connect to the others and make them bad seeds. And that's Mm -hmm. why, why is that? Dan, you just touched on human nature. I used to sell leadership training to corporations. So oftentimes I'd have to make presentations to a management team up in Minneapolis, St. Paul. That's where I did, did this for 10 years. You go in, you sit down with a, a team of seven, you have an hour and you try to basically get a team of seven to say, yes, we want to buy this training from this company John Miller represents. Who do you think was always more influential? The people who thought it was a good idea or the naysayers? It the was naysayers. always, always <laughs> the negative people. Always. The negative people in that room had more influence than the positive people. I don't know why it is. I've just accepted it as human nature. Yeah, yeah. for I, sure. Maybe they're just, I don't know. It's sort of like what's going on with the political. The the people that that are crying the blues and you know pushing their agenda are silent majority, but they're doing it. They're I'm not, not silent, but they're the they're the minority. Loud Mi- minority. They're minority. Yeah. They're, they're loud minorities that, that are changing everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's that's baffling. Up to, that's up why do people do we can do. why do people escape a certain state because of the policies, then come to Arizona and turn it purple by voting with the same for the same policies? We'll never understand it. I think it's just simple lack of self awareness. Probably, probably. I just talked to a guy who's escaping Chicago. He's going to come to Colorado and he's going to vote for the same policies. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. it makes we me won't get back crazy. into that, right? Oh man, I, th- and that is the thing is we just try to you know with this show we try to engage, educate, and inform. With your book, you're like, here's the good food. It's up to you. Eat it or don't. <laughs> right. right. Digest right. it or don't. And, uh, you know, just do what we can do. But John, thank you so much for all that you do and all the teaching that you put out there and and the ways that you get this message across. I think you've done it in in a beautiful way where it's not, uh, it's not judgy. It's, it's, I appreciate that. Yeah. It's non-threatening. It's kind of like, Ooh, what, what, what does that mean? Ooh, question behind the question. Hmm, I'm going to try to make people be curious about it. For sure. I I not feel shamed. A beautiful job with that. And, and thank, thank you, you for uh, coming back on. I promise it won't be six years until the well, next. <laughs> because, because I'm accountable, I have to be honest, it was 2017 you had me on the show. 
Okay. I was, I was wrong. It's been three years. It was 2014. I came down and spoke to your team in Arizona. And we need to do that again. We have pretty sure. well a new team. For sure. And um, it's something that I think they need. Well, you know what? Daughter Kristen does the finest Zoom workshops on QBQ ever. I will put her in touch with you. She can do a wonderful workshop for your team. That is great news. I'm and because we're that. evil capitalists, it's not free. I would never expect that. No. I think that, you know, good work should be paid for, right? And, I, and now you're telling me that this is also a, uh, a family biz. This has grown into a family biz. Well, amazingly, Cheryl Kristen, who's 37, joined us in 08. She had just turned 25. I sent her to a hospital in Utah. She taught QBQ. CEO loved her, gave her some feedback, and she's just blossomed ever since 12 years later. She, before COVID, she went all over the country speaking on QBQ. I've been to, I've spoken in 49 states. I've been to Hawaii, I've never spoken there professionally. Kristen's been like 42 states, so she's trying oh. to catch dad. Wow. I like it. I but love now she it. does our Zoom sessions. Fantastic. Well, we'll definitely be checking that out and tell folks again one more time, how do they follow you and find you? Thank you. Just come to QBQ.com and on Facebook, QBQ group. Could not be more simple than that. Thank you so much, John. We'll definitely be talking to you again Thank you. soon. Thanks, John. See you, we'll folks. see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. You know, it was been, it's been like seven years since he's been to our shop, and I still remember it like it was yesterday, mm -hmm. even though it was a long time ago. It was powerful. It was impactful, yeah. and we, we didn't even have like a huge group in-house at the time, but it caught such fire that I heard people telling their spouses about it and talking about it around their dinner tables and... Um, and again, it's so simple, but it's, it's impactful because it's almost like being revolutionary nowadays, right? I mean, it's like, wait a minute, you don't have to be in a constant state of, you know, being offended at other people's behavior and lashing out in your indignation and, right. you know, being the Mrs. Kravitz and the Karens peeking through the curtains and, you know, look out, out. Judging out of hand your neighbors. It's how out of hand it's gotten with the mask and all the other things that are going on where people think that they have they need to police everybody. I mean, I have friends that, that are law enforcement are telling me that they have to go to calls where a person won't wear a mask and they feel they have to call the police to, because of it. I, I mean, come think on. About it's, that. A, it's a just the police. You know, if if you are <laughs> guys if, with gun. And some of these people would probably say that they're anti-gun. And so they're going to call guys that are going to enforce the law at the end of a gun, potentially, right. if things go really, really bad. I mean, come on. Let's just keep our wits about us. Let's take a collective cleansing breath and just bring the, the fervor down a little bit. I like what you said earlier. And mm -hmm. you know, it's it's something we should all think about. Maybe you should be the next president. I don't know. Oh, but stop it. The, Nobody wants that. No, me. if we lived in a society that, you know, my rights, yeah. as long as it doesn't affect anyone else, yes. my rights are, are my rights. Okay. Right. If, you know, it's sort of like if you want to run, run around the house naked in your house with the windows closed, you can do that, right? Because it, right. it doesn't affect my neighbor. Right. And you should be able to do that. You should right. be able to do whatever you want that doesn't affect your neighbor. Right. So I guess the anti-gun person would say, well, a gun could get out and somebody else could get it and it could shoot my kid or whatever. But it's not going to get it's out. Not, it's, it's not. The, shoot it's the, it's the kid. person. It's Again, the person it's back to that. And behavior. Right. You know, when you talk about running around naked in your house, naked, right? Instead of naked. 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 Um, kind of along the same lines only clothing with clothes on. naked with clothes yes on. naked with clothes when we would go to the lake on the weekends we used to have jet skis and we would go with our friends and they had a boat and we would go to the lake you know we'd enjoy having music we'd have a little radio with us or something like that a little transistor radio and what we taught our daughter was it's fine to listen to your music as long as your volume does not carry to whoever's in the camp next to us. Right. It's a similar thing. You know, the minute that you've got that volume up to where you are now infringing on your neighbor's peace, right? Maybe they want to listen to their own music and now it's fighting, or maybe they just want to hear the sounds of nature, right? 
the minute your sound carries over into their camp, you are in the wrong. Right. You're period. infringing on their right to relax. Exactly. Right. I don't know why that is such a difficult thing because you'll just even hear people in traffic. It's like their music is so unbelievably loud right. that there's no way that they can't understand, they can't comprehend that they are, they're imposing their sounds on other people around them while we're driving, while we're at a park, parked at a, a, a red light. I might even love the music coming out of their car, but I'm... I'm still sitting there scratching my head thinking, who was their mom? Where, was, where are their parents? Why didn't somebody teach them? That, that's, that's inappropriate. It's rude. You're not, um, you're not making the world a better place with your tunes. And it's got to be good for them too. I mean, think about that. Oh, oh right. Yeah, the ears. But anyway, I could probably talk about that ad nauseum because it, it really – but that's what the books are about, right? The, the QBQ, the what, what am I doing to contribute good or bad to the world around me? And um, one thing that I've learned in all of my studies, because, you know, as everybody probably knows by now, we're, we are business owners, we're co-hosts on a radio show, but my degrees, my learning, my schooling, where I've spent m much of my time reading books and, and studying is about um, psychology. And what I've learned is that there's something really, really powerful and really, really freeing about personal accountability and about realizing that, oh, maybe I'm the problem in this situation because if I'm the problem, then I can control fixing it. Right. Right? That is so powerful. If it's always somebody out there that's ruining my life, right? Or somebody out there who's doing something bad to me, then I have, how much control do right. I have over that? That's I'm constantly right. looking at them to fix what is wrong in my personal existence. And you're never going to get very far with that. So it's much better if you can figure it out that, oh, okay, it's how I feel about this. It's how I'm reacting to this. It's the amount of mental real estate I'm allowing this person or that person. So um, anyway, I love, I love all of this. This is some of my candy here is, is reading about um, how we can do better as individual people um, in the QBQ, flipping the switch, um, the parenting book, the workbook. I encourage everybody to get out there and get those. Well, I'm so glad that you're reading these kind of books, Cheryl. I'm so glad. Yes. Hmm. Why would you say that, Mr. Todd? Well, because when we first got married, you know, and she's practicing these books, right? She's practicing this I'm very doing well. my best. You know, but when we, we all first got married, can only do what we can do, right? The only titles she had were murder mystery books <laughs> and with their highlighted <laughs> points. So I'm glad that she's reading books on self improvement. And <laughs> good for me. Good for me. Okay. I did, I really did enjoy murder mystery books but they had to be real stories because i wanted to know how do people what to get away with <laughs> that's what... seriously i think that's what he thought for several years well when you highlight certain things in a <laughs> there murder was mystery no book. highlighter there was no highlighter involved i might have turned a page down but there was no highlighter anyway i just studying human behavior it was fascinating no they to are me to they really how... are I, I joke about that all the time but they are interesting <laughs> i i I too watch, listen to the mystery murder things. Mm -hmm. so. so should I be worried then? No. no, because I also read QBQ. <laughs> I love it. All right. This has been really a fun interview. So it's an, it makes me feel better to know that there are still people out there that are curious about this, four or five of them, yeah, that are trying to... Um, do what they can do in their individual lives without putting the boot of government on the neck of their neighbor. Why is it everybody's fault? It's everybody's fault, right? I don't know. I, we got to wrap this up. Don't get me rolled up again. Don't get me riled up again. But, uh, but really, it's, it's so sad that we wake up in the morning and go, what's going to go wrong today that somebody else's fault? Yeah. Well, the news is about what, what just did go wrong and it's is somebody it, else's did, fault. And wait, we're getting ready to... Wait, you've been gone for a week. Yeah. Is, is, there, is news still around? I know. I haven't.
turn the TV on any news. I know. I feel a oh. little out of touch and it's kind of nice. I watched seasons <laughs> nine of American Horror Story while you're gone. Oh, golly. It is so good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's so good. But anyway, he has to watch so those when I'm not no here. News. I'm a ninny. No. I'll read the real true crime. Yes. I'll read about all the, the blood and guts, but I'm not going to watch like American Horror Story. So, no <laughs> news. And my Facebook limited to market space. Oh, and you probably feel like a new man. I, I feel like there's nothing wrong in the world right now. No, I well, I know. Time with the grandkids. Nice. Yeah, I know we have issues coming up, but uh, yeah. hey, you know, just, I can only change myself. That's the thing. And as we're listening to the RNC and the DNC and all the politics ramping up, um, spend some time in these books and uh, maybe it'll keep your, your stress level down. What did John say? Uh, ever been all stressed up with no place to go? I love that. Stressed up. All right. We're getting out of here. Thank you so much to our awesome guest today, John G. Miller of the QBQ.com. Um, thank you to our wonderful listeners. Honestly, uh, you all are changing the world. You are taking these conversations. You are bringing them around your dinner table. You're bringing them into your Zoom chat rooms on your, your Facebook memes. Um, and, and truly, that is how we change the world. Um, one one day at a time, one decision at a time, one conversation at a time. So thank you. Your time is your most finite resource. And whether you're watching us on YouTube, on GunStreamer, on OpsLens, which is an app on your smartphone, or whether you listen in on our website, gunfreedomradio.com, clicking the On Demand tab, uh, we value your time and we, we appreciate you. Thank you for that. And until next time, Dan. Until so next time. What do we do? Oh, we pray. We do. What do we pray for? Oh, my gosh. Everything? Uh, everything. <laughs> pray. We pray for this world. We pray for our nation. Mm -hmm. We pray for our leaders. All of them, Dan? Leaders. All the leaders. Our representatives, though, too. All our representatives. Yeah. Even the ones you don't like. Uh, there's no leaders or representatives I don't like, so I will... I will pray for all the leaders and representatives. <laughs> I see what you're doing here. You're splitting hairs. There's especially there's another, the ones you don't like. Oh, what about the royal, the royalists? Uh, is that what they were? Is that what you call somebody who is, is uh, royalty that thinks that they uh, govern the the country by their their their, their sword decree? Yeah. So is that what would you call them? Well, why wouldn't you want to pray for? They're them? not leaders. Why wouldn't you want to pray for them? They're not leaders. Okay. They're not uh, representatives. Okay. They're royalists. Well, I, I, is that right? Okay, so now do we end the show with pray for our leaders, pray for our representatives, and pray for our royalists? We don't. We're not supposed to have any of those. This is a free country. That's right. So we don't have any. <laughs> you're you're wrapping me in a loop here, and I'm trying to I'm trying to end the show, babe. Okay, I'll pray for everybody. Okay. Okay. Be good to each other. Have a great week, and God bless. Bye bye. <laughs>